Hey all and welcome to this video. In today's video we'll be upgrading this Child's Ford Focus to new 40,000 RPM motors. Now the car in its current form can do four to five miles an hour with a child in. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure the RPM at the wheels as standard. We're going to fit our new motors and gearboxes and then we're going to measure again to see what the difference is and to equate. Now for measuring the RPM of here we can calculate the speed the car is capable of. So I'm going to readjust to show you how we're going to measure the RPM of the wheel. And then we'll make a note of that and carry on. Let's go. So I will be showing you how to upgrade, replace the motors in here as well. So yeah, let's have some fun. Okay, so as you can see, I've jumped the car up in the air so the rear wheels are floating. It's resting on top of a printer if you really want to know. I have my digital tachometer here. So you kind of, you put a marker on here, which I put a bit of tape. Shine a laser at it, as you can see the laser point, and it will calculate the RPM through reflections. So, let's get to measuring. And so, I've got my remote control here. So, we hold down forward button, and go. Right. So I don't know if you saw that pick up or not, but we're getting around 100 RPM on the standard motor at the moment. So let's power the car down. We'll take it to 100. It fluctuated between 100.1 up to 101.4, but on average it was around the 100 mark. So that will be our baseline. So let's get this set up for pulling apart and removing the gearboxes. So I've attempted to decluster this as much as possible to give you a good view. So we need to pop this trim off first of all. Oh, first of all actually, you need to disconnect your battery when doing any, any electrical work. As standard, always disconnect your battery. So you can just use a screwdriver down here. One, two, three, four. Yes, right. So these pins, I don't know how well you can see that. It should be showing up. Straighten them out. And slide it out, keep it safe. Slide your wheel off, done. Okay. Keep all the bits safe. Next thing, lift it up. Flip it on its back actually and slide the next wheel out. Done. So that's our wheels out. So next I'm going to flip it back over and we actually we can do this from this side. Bring it a bit closer. Let me try taping those out of the way very quickly. Right. Take that side. I'm just trying to move some wires out of the way quickly for you. Right. Pull your wire motor through. Disconnect. We'll do one side at a time. So let's go. Let's get it done. Quick, quick, quick. Right, so we grab our new motor, clip it in place. Yep, it's locked in place. Slide it in. That simple, really. Next, we're gonna do the same on the other side. And then we'll test to make sure the motors are both spinning in the same direction. So, we have both motors wired up. Let's Set our pole. I'm oh, gonna need to move back a little bit and slide it all back together. Same as what you did when it was brand new. Okay, pretty quickly. Line up all the way through. Yep. Yep. Now. To fit your rear wheel, it's just a bit of a reversal of what we did before with the pin. So we're just going to slide it back on temporarily. Now, we're not going to lock it in place until we know everything is fully working. Because we haven't tested to make sure they're both spinning in the correct direction yet, have we? So, we need to double check. So, let's check. Right, so we're all powered back up, so let's give it a quick test. Let's go forwards. Yeah. 
backwards. We're both spinning in the same direction. Now let's check we're spinning going forwards and backwards as it says it should be. So bear with me. Right, here we go. Let's go backwards and forwards. Right, so we've done that. So we're all back together. Somebody was the process, same process as what we did to remove it apart. Now, let's grab our digital tachometer and find out the difference. Now the standard motors I found out are 9,600 RPM and we fitted 40,000 RPM motors. So in theory, we should see, sorry, not 9,600, there were 12,000 12, RPM as standard. So we should see at least a threefold increase in power. We've got to remember, we're still just running at 12 volts and the control board is was designed for smaller motors so it may not be able to power the motors to full power but let's rack it up in the air and let's check that speed output and see what the difference is so let's go let's see so it transpires that where i bought this car in the house i bought mud in again so the missus is gonna kill me so, but we'll do that later on we'll keep that one up on our br secret and let's grab the remote let's see what we're getting Make sure we're in the high speed setting and shine our digital tachometer on. And, oh, hold on. That was an issue. There you go, right, we are showing zero. Good, fine, and go. So as you saw, we have held steady at 215 RPM versus our original 100. So double, expected a bit more. That could be a limitation on the controller, but we doubled the speed. So let's work out what this translates into, into mile an hour. I'll do the calculations and come back. After measuring the circumference of the wheels, we've gone from four mile an hour standard to 11 miles an hour unloaded speed from those calculations. So we've had a 2.8 times increase in speed. So we've more than doubled the speed of this car. That's brilliant. Let's get the control upgraded. See if we can squeeze a bit more out of those motors. I'll get the motors broken in. So they'll spin a bit more freely. So we may get a little bit more, but I'm not expecting a massive increase. Past 11 mile now, we might reach 12, we might get a steady three fold increase, which would be very nice. But you do lose some power in the gearing and everything. So, but yeah, this was a brief video on how to upgrade and replace the motors and gearbox in a Powers Ride On car. So, enjoy. This is my kid's car, and yeah, have a good one.